So I just finished up sourcing a couple days ago. We bought $1,500 worth of stuff and we gotta pack it up. But I figured instead of just showing you how I pack it up, I would tell you everything that I use as a professional reseller that makes my life easier or that I need in my business. So all this stuff behind me is stuff that I use all the time. In these boxes, I actually have some restocks, which I'm really stoked about. And then I'll also talk about the different softwares and things that I use in my business. So this is mainly the stuff that I use when I go sourcing. Honestly, all that you need is going to be a phone and then the apps. These are the different apps that I use on my phone while I'm sourcing. I got the eBay app, Scoutify 2, Scout IQ, and Amazon Seller. Really the only ones that you need of these are free and that's gonna be the Amazon app and the eBay app. This is something that I forgot to catalog correctly last week, so let's go ahead and just look at it based off of just the Amazon app. When you come in here, first it's gonna show you the sales for the day. You're gonna come up here, you can either go to this camera or down here to add a product. I just always hit the camera. And then this is how you'll search for items. So it's gonna show you a couple different options because when this UPC is scanned, it pulls up two different things. See, I can sell a new condition. Amazon is selling it for $8.41. And if you're interested in how much you would make back, if you're sending it in FBA, you click on that button. So there's two different parts of this, seller fulfilled and Amazon fulfilled. I don't do anything seller fulfilled. All of my stuff is FBA. Go over to Amazon fulfilled. The low price is $8.41. That's what Amazon is selling it for right now. And then all the fees amount to $4.57. So you'll be getting back $3.84 if you send this in to FBA and it sells. Now I was able to pick these up for right about $2. So I'm almost at 100% profit margin, but I know that these will sell for something that we'll get to now. Scout IQ is $14 a month. I'll see if they have an affiliate program. If not, it's not a big deal. I'll still leave a link to one down below. With this one, you go to Scout there. You hit this little scan button in the bottom. Then you scan your item. When we scanned it on Amazon, we saw that there were two different listings. This one pulled up the first listing instead of the second one. Sometimes Scout IQ does that and it just chooses the listing for you. That's why I like having two or three different things that I can look things up on because that gives you a fuller picture. With this listing, we get $7.69 back if this was to sell on Amazon. It shows all of the offers over here. The lowest offer is $12.08. If you click into this top part here, you'll be able to see a breakdown of all the fees. Put in what you bought it for. And so if we just put $2, then it'll spit out 569 is the profit. Before that, it said profit of seven and change. That just means the total you'll get back if you bought it for $0. And so what I always do is look at that 769 and divide it by two. So it's about $3.85. And then as long as this costs less than that, I know I'm over 100%. The other thing that I really like about this app is this button down here. It links over to Keepa.com and it'll show you how often something actually sells. So this graph right here, every time that it dips down is a day that that item has sold because the sales rank goes down as things sell. And this just tracks the sales rank over a length of time. That's really helpful for me if I'm buying an item that might have a higher sales rank to see if it sells at all. Because if something has a high sales rank but no FBA sellers, if it's sold four or five times in the last couple of months, I'll pick up four or five of them because I know that with no other FBA sellers, I'll probably get the buy box. Now the last Amazon app that I use is Scoutify 2. This comes with my subscription to Inventory Lab, which is a $49 per month program. To search something here, you just press that button, scan that up, and now we'll see we have the two listings. We'll click on the first listing, which is the one that Amazon was on. And as you'll see, this one pulled up both of them. So if we click on this one, it'll show the 1208. But as you'll see here, it'll show the same thing. Net profit, new, used, and FBA. New and used is gonna be anybody who is not an Amazon fulfilled listing. FBA will have all new and used in there. I really like this app because you can just click here for restrictions. And since you're logged in with your Amazon seller, it'll show you whether or not you can sell something and in which conditions you can sell it in. So I normally will scout with this. And if I check the sales rank and make sure it's a good sales rank, for me normally around 200,000 and below. In most of the categories I sell, you can also click on it and it'll show this is the top 1% of items. If it's a questionable sales rank, I'll head over to Scout IQ and look it up there with Keepa to see how often it actually sells. But you don't need either of those and you can just use the Amazon Seller app. That's what I used for my first couple shipments and then I realized, hey, I think I'm gonna get a little more serious about this and I bought the apps. eBay app is what you'll use to source things for eBay and I made a whole video about that that you can watch right over here if you're interested. Like I said, Scoutify 2 is connected with Inventory Lab, which is something on your computer. I also made a video of how I sent in a shipment to Amazon where I go over a lot of those different features. I'm gonna be making a more dedicated video about all of the features in Inventory Lab that I know about, so stay tuned for that. The other things that I think are super important are gonna be a coffee mug, because I'm a coffee drinker, and if you like coffee too, you're gonna be out there for a long time if you're doing it full time, or even just one full day, and I like to have a little bit of restock of coffee. Also, I just have headphones. I feel like most people will have a coffee mug and headphones, so I'm not really gonna to link to those down in the description, but everything else that I talk about in the video, I am gonna probably have affiliate links for in the description. It would support the channel if you bought anything through those links, or you could just use it as a reference point, doesn't really matter. As I got more serious about reselling, I would sometimes take a cooler with me, but honestly, this is something that I used once and don't really use it all anymore. I prefer having something like these as my headphones because they're a little bit better, but 
these Apple headphones are something that I've been having to use more and more of. Now the reason for that is these aren't Bluetooth headphones and the next thing we're gonna talk about is a Bluetooth scanner. Now honestly getting this Bluetooth scanner was a little bit of a game changer for me as I started reselling more seriously, but it's not something that you need in your business. These work as a keyboard in your phone which is why I needed to start using these type of headphones more. This is Bluetooth and this is Bluetooth and this acts as a keyboard so when it's on, some apps won't let you access your normal keyboard. So if I'm using this and I'm scanning items for Amazon and then I wanna go into eBay and look up a pair of shoes, I would have to wait a minute for this to turn off or turn off my Bluetooth, which would turn off whatever podcast or music I was listening to. So I decided to go with these instead. Let's come in this little box. I can make a whole video going over the scanner. It's the cheapest one I could find on Amazon. It's like 40 bucks and it does save me a ton of time when I go sourcing, especially when I'm sourcing stuff like fishing gear when there might be a lot of clearance items and I have to just go scan, 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 scan. It's a lot faster than having to click the button on your phone, hold up your phone, look at your phone. Not a necessity by any means, but if you're getting more serious, definitely something to look into and I'll leave a link for it down below. Also, don't forget a phone charger, I forgot about that. And a USB-C charger or whatever charger you need for your scanner as well because this thing has died on me almost every time that I've gone out. Speaking of phone, this is a phone case that I like to use when I'm sourcing. I put a pop socket on the back of a case. I got the case for like 10 bucks at Walmart and I got the pop socket for like four bucks at Walmart. Honestly, if you're sourcing inventory at like TJ Maxx, Ross or Marshalls, you can probably put this together for even cheaper than I did mine. The reason I like using this is because I'm able to hold my phone like this and it is a little bit less fatiguing than having to grab my phone for the whole day. This probably isn't a problem for you if you aren't as tiny as me, but I'm like five foot five, five foot six, and so my hands aren't very big. So stretching around an iPhone can be a little fatiguing if I'm able to just hold it like this then I don't actually have to hold it and I can just scan away and it makes my life a little bit easier. One of the last things that I use when I'm sourcing is just this bag. You've seen it in my videos if you watch my sourcing videos. I only use this now that I'm carrying a camera. I've seen a lot of other resellers around my area who just have one of these and they're not filming themselves. I'm sure that they put some stuff in there. I just keep everything in my car because I try to be in and out of stores in a relatively quick amount of time. So now that we've bought everything and we've used all the stuff that we needed to source it, we're going to have to ship everything into Amazon. And this is the stuff that I use. If you have any suggestions to make my life a little easier like some of the stuff that I bought because you guys suggested it please let me know in the comments down below and don't think that you need all of this in order to run your business it's just what I learned that I need as I'm running my business because I probably sell things that are different than what you sell you might not need everything that I need and you might even need more I really like opening up mail so we're gonna do that I normally use this but because this is a video about the stuff that we use for Amazon you are probably gonna need a box cutter which can be stupid cheap on Amazon or at Walmart honestly these are no fun because you don't actually need anything to open them and this outside packaging is actually something as well. I will save them so that if I have anything I need to ship for eBay, even though it says Amazon Prime on it, you can still use it to ship eBay stuff. These are labels. Now the reason that I use these labels is because this is what I use to print. I just use a normal laser printer. I don't really use anything fancy just because when I got started, I didn't have a lot of money to invest in a label printer because I wanted to make sure that I could scale my business before I invested a lot in it. And so I bought this for like a hundred bucks at an office depot and it's been working fine for me. And so I use 30 up Avery labels, which are these. But here's another tip as well. This I bought from Amazon Warehouse because it was like 30% cheaper from them. But because it's from Amazon Warehouse, it's already been opened by someone. So I'm just gonna inspect it, make sure that all the labels are there. And as long as that's fine, doesn't really matter if it's from Amazon Warehouse or not, it's still gonna work for me. And so I'd rather save the $5. And the worst case scenario, Amazon stands by their stuff so I can just return it to Amazon. So that's the first thing, labels. And we're gonna use these as we print off each of the specific labels to put onto our products after we de-sticker them from whatever Ross, Marshalls, or TJ Maxx stickers they might have. So for the labels, I use Inventory Lab. I've already approved the three shipments that constitute all of that inventory back there. But since I don't have a label printer, which is what some people have suggested that I do, I just use my normal laser printer because it's just a lot cheaper for me. So we'll go into Amazon here and on Amazon you just go into work on shipment right over here review modify units scroll all the way down and then print labels for this page there's only gonna be 20 labels it'll come down into a downloaded sheet now for the hard part so I'm really happy that was only one sheet because as you saw at the end there it kind of curled back around and that's what will end up happening if I don't extend this piece on my printer. If you're just using a laser printer, do that. Otherwise, you'll waste a lot of sheets of labels. And one of the big tricks that I have is to keep all of the half-used label pages. Not all the labels on this page were used. Only these ones were. And so I just keep this. So if I have a page where I only need to use 10 labels, I don't have to use a full label sheet. I can use this one instead. One of the other things that I really like about having all these extra labels is for something like this. 
It has a ton of different barcodes on it. It's got one right here, one right there, literally every single side of it, which is great for scanning it at Walmart, but it's not very good when you're sending it to Amazon and you have to cover all the barcodes, except for the one that's gonna be used for the actual label. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my label on this guy. And then I have to cover all of the other ones. What I have been doing for that is using actual white labels, these labels for doing it, because that's what I know will for sure work. And I've had no problems with that. If someone knows whether or not I can just take a Sharpie and kind of strike through the middle of it, or maybe down, I don't know how exactly I would do that. If someone knows, please let let me know in the comments because that would make life a little easier if I do ever have these type of items again. Also, this box, I'm definitely gonna keep this box because I'm either gonna ship this back into Amazon or use it for eBay. Yes. Okay, also, this stuff, this is how I pad all my Amazon boxes as well, it's just from stuff from Amazon. These are poly bags. Might not need these in your business, it just depends on what you sell. Amazon will tell you what they require in terms of prep, and most clothing items will require poly bagging. But I also use it, as you've seen in my videos where I ship stuff to Amazon, just to pad items that are a little bit more fragile. So now that I have pretty much this whole shipment ready to go, it's just 20 items, it all fits in there. I do have this one last thing though. As you can see, it's pretty fragile. These ends of these bobbers could break really, really easily. I could bubble wrap it and that'll be fine. However, since I already put a label on there, I'd have to put another label on the bubble wrap. So instead, what I end up doing is getting poly bags. The way that I like to do it is I like to find a bag as wide as this is tall. If your poly bag has an opening that's more than five inches, you need to make sure it has a warning label on it. Throw this in, the back side facing the side that doesn't have the warning label. And now that it's like this, you can still see the label, and so I just go ahead and fold the bag over it a couple times. Now you can still see the label, but now there's some air that's cushioning those little spines or whatever these are on the bobbers, and that's gonna be much safer for it to travel like that. Whatever you think might need a poly bag, or like how you saw in the video that this is related to, I picked up that moleskin that needs to be rebagged. One of these that will fit perfectly around it is gonna be exactly what we'll use to do that. I actually completely ran out of poly bags, so that's why I had to buy more of those. Try to stay more restocked than I am. I am very bad that's at this. This one is gonna include some stuff that you guys said that I need to do because I kept complaining about my fingernails and you guys are like, bro, you're stupid. Just spend $5 and stop complaining. More goodies for us to keep and use later. These are Scotty peelers. I have not used them yet, but you will watch me use them pretty much right now. All right, so we're getting the first shipment done, the 20 labels. We have everything that doesn't need to be delabeled done. Now, in order to get all the labels onto these products, I have to actually start taking some of these type of labels off. That's where these are really gonna shine. But there's a couple steps in the process. First, you have to get the labels off. Some labels are easier than others. For instance, these Ollie's labels really suck, whereas these Ollie's labels are really easy to get off. The great thing is, a heat source will get almost every label off in no problem. This is just my wife's hair dryer. You just use the heat on the label and then you're able to peel it off. It's gonna be even better now that I have the Scotty peeler because before my hands were having to go pretty much right where the heat was coming off. Now I can kind of be back a little bit. Yeah, that's amazing. After all of that, you take your goo gone. I like to put it on my towel because I just use a towel for a very, very long time because it stores some of the goo gone in the microfiber. I just add a little bit more to make sure that there's some on the spot that I'm gonna be using and then I'll wipe off any residue or stickiness that's left after you take off the sticker. It's a really simple process, but these four things have really made it easy for me to do in the past, with the exception of this guy, but if that first thing is any indication of what's to come, I'm super excited for it and grateful for everybody like Natasha and a couple other people who have reached out to me and told me to do it. Super fast, and my hands don't hurt. Just try not to hold the heat on it for too long, otherwise you could deform the plastic. You gotta be careful. Some people have said to use a heat gun. I'm actually looking to see if any of my friends have a heat gun, then I'll use theirs, another box to keep. And then we got tape. This is the best tape that I found. I've used a couple of the different duct tapes before. I've used one of the scotch tapes as well. I ran out of tape in one of my last videos because I'm bad at restocking my stuff. And so we had to go out and get these little baby ones. And these ones cost like $4 each. And they have 22 yards of tape. This one, I was able to buy on a subscribe and save basis. So they're gonna ship another one to me in like five or six months. And it is 656 yards and it was like 16 bucks. So future Anthony, do the math on that. It's stupid how much cheaper this is. Any tape that has like the sound as you rip it apart is gonna be good for me because that means it's gonna stick better. So this tape, the box. Some other things that you're gonna need in your business are going to be boxes. These two boxes are examples of USPS boxes that you can just pick up for free at your local post office. I use these to store inventory as well as to ship things out for eBay. Sometimes I'll even use it to organize Amazon stuff and I'll just put it inside one of my bigger boxes that I ship everything in for Amazon to keep stuff more organized. Next, I have Home Depot boxes. 
These are the, my favorite boxes. I have used the Walmart boxes before. I haven't used Uline boxes or whatever. These are just cheap Home Depot boxes. I think this small one's like a buck and a quarter. Medium one's like a buck fifty. And this is what I use to send all of my stuff into Amazon. A couple other things that I need is paper because I'm using just a normal laser printer. I don't want to buy like Avery labels to stick on the boxes or any eBay shipments that I have. And then the Amazon and UPS labels when I'm shipping stuff into Amazon. This is just more stuff I got out as an example because I forgot that I was opening those boxes. And so this is what I'm going to use to top off all of my Amazon shipment. This is just an accordion folder. I use it to catalog all of my receipts. I was taking pictures of them and putting it into QuickBooks, which is, oh, that's something else that I use. I use QuickBooks for my accounting purposes. I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing for Amazon accounting. That's what I use because I'm also accounting for startup business expenses for this and a couple other YouTube channels as well as Carissa's creative company. But this is what I use for receipts. I don't really take pictures of receipts anymore. I just organize them based on the shipment that I send in. And then if there are any questions about anything, I can just pull it up based on the shipment. Next is a computer. I have a new MacBook Air with the M1 chip. I really like it. It's super fast. I use it to edit all of my videos as well and it hasn't given me much of a problem. This is only a thousand dollars if you're interested in doing something creative as well as reselling. It's a really good option for you. I just got the base model. It's working fine because I have external hard drives for a lot of my footage. But you are going to need some sort of laptop or something that will connect to the internet and allows you to print. That's pretty much what you're going to need a laptop for or desktop. You might be able to do it through your phone. I just think that it's a lot easier to do stuff on some sort of computer. And then this right here, as you can see, is based on one of these little priority boxes, but I just turned it into something that I use for storage. This is kind of like my bread and butter of something that I use in order to resell. I'll just shop towels here that I'll use with my goo gone in order to take the goo off of things. This box cutter on the top here with like this clothespin and also with a measuring tape, which you're gonna need in order to measure stuff for eBay and Amazon. And then in here, I just have some blue tape. I honestly don't remember the last time I used that. And then I have the towel that I'm using right now for Ugon. I honestly have only gone through about two of these towels in the last couple of months. And then I have a Sharpie that I keep in there as well. And you're probably going to need a Sharpie because you're going to have to take all of the barcodes off of the box, especially if you reuse boxes. That's what the post office says that you have to do. And here I just have more razors for my box cutter. And then this is just a kitchen scale that I use in order to weigh everything for eBay. And this is a bathroom scale that I use in order to weigh everything for Amazon. You can definitely get a shipping scale and I'll leave one linked below. I haven't needed one and it's been fine for me. I just know my scale runs one to two pounds heavy, but I still try to keep it right around 49 pounds. That way I know when I take stuff into UPS, it's going to say 47 or 48. That way I'm still safe under that 50 pound mark for Amazon. This one is very precise because it's just a kitchen scale. It's made for precision, so I don't have any worries about that. One other thing that you may need is one of these. It's just an organizer. It just depends on the space that you have. I live in like a 700 square foot apartment right now. And so all of my eBay stuff is stored in this little organizer. And then the rest of my storage right now is pretty much just down here for eBay stuff and up here. All of the bubble mailers that get shipped to me, I'll put back in here so I can reuse them. Some broken down boxes that I use as padding in my Amazon shipments, and then a bunch of boxes up here. You might also need some of these bins that you can buy for pretty cheap at Walmart. Honestly, I feel like I'm probably forgetting something, and if I am, I will let you know right now. There was one thing that I forgot, and Jman10 actually commented what tools such as repricers do you use for Amazon, and that's exactly what I had forgotten was repricers. But the repricer that I use is called repriceit.com. I gotta be completely honest with you. I'm not great at repricing. It's definitely something I wanna get better at, but if you know my channel, you know I'm using reselling to buy back my time so that I can pursue a business I'm really truly passionate about. And so if anybody has any suggestions on repricing or anything like that, let me know. But I just use Reprice It. They have a couple different tiers based on how many inventory items you need repriced. To my understanding, this is number of SKUs that you have, not total number of items. I have just over a thousand SKUs, but I have over 2,000 items. When I realized it was SKUs, I actually downgraded to the basic plus plan from the merchant plan, which saved me $8 a month. So I pay $17 a month right now for my rear price. Back to me in the past. If you want to see when we bought all this stuff, check out that video right over here. All of the videos that I've been doing on reselling are going to be housed in this playlist right here that you can just click through and check out. And then this video can help you out if you're interested in credit cards at all, because I don't just do reselling content. I really just want to help people be holistically smarter with their money. Reselling is just one of the ways that that's been easier for me. Like I said, I'm not the authority. So if you have anything that you suggest that I do better, go ahead and let me know down in the comments down below and ask any questions that you might have as well. Stay smart.